there we go okay so um so we have two more months like march within the almost yeah middle of march um and then april we are done so i hope all of you are doing well um yeah uh, getting something out of, of all the courses uh you know putting to practice what you've been learning um and uh, maybe even you know the key points the things that uh, that you that stood out you know, you're just making a note of it and uh, yeah i'm sure there's a deposit happening somewhere in your spirit and i think uh, that's something that you can pray and ask god you know i'm i'm, I'm i know that i'm you know, uh, intentionally uh, studying and, uh, you know, uh, engaging my mind and everything. But Lord, I just want to receive my spirit as well. You know, that can be our prayer as we go through the course and saying, God, let me catch in my spirit, you know, put things in my spirit, write things in, in my spirit. Um, you know, what I'm, what I'm hearing, what we are uh, studying and the Lord would do that. Right. And, and the, and the best part is this, um, like, we have the Holy Spirit who indwells us. And one of the things um, about the Holy Spirit, which the Lord Jesus uh, said, that, that he will is one who, who will remind us, right? In John chapter 15, I think, where we see that um, uh, the, uh, the Lord saying that, uh, yeah, uh, John 14, sorry, John 14, 26, uh, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I said to you, right? Specifically there, He's talking about the disciples and uh, what the Lord taught the disciples during, you know, those three years, three and a half years. So um, he's, that the Holy Spirit will remind you of those things. But we see that uh, that's something that that uh, that is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, right? That's the functioning of the Holy Spirit, that he will teach and he will also remind us of the things. So, um, yeah, so uh, we can be encouraged that. Well, all the inputs that I'm getting, you know, day in and day out, the Lord will remind me of these things, you know, even as I receive in my spirit, even as I engage my mind and intellect um, to understand these things, to put these things together. Um, some of these things seem to be like slipping away, but then uh, I, you know, we lean uh, into the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He will remind us of these things to come, uh, of these things that he's taught us, right? So, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, Sorry, somebody, did someone put a hand up? Okay, fine. Oh, yeah, Chris, um, go ahead, please. Ah, yes, Pastor. So I was, I was as, you, as you were just talking to this, I, I was just uh, wanting to ask you a question with regards to, uh, you know, the, um, you know, the, the impression you have and, you know, the, the, uh, you know what is your feel about you know uh, the level not the level of not just the level of interaction mm -hmm. but also um uh, you know what what and the, you know, the you know the kind of feedback that you get from you know the the online class versus all the um, you know the in class uh, you know um, that used to happen before uh, before the co before covid the in person and, classes okay mm. Um, I, I think the, for me, I think personally, I think, um, you know, it's, it has been, uh, you know, it's extremely positive and, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of, lot of, you know, ex, you know, really good, um, uh, you know, um, learnings that, um, that I have personally got. Um, but I think, um, you know, I think it, it may have been a bit different, you know, if it, is, if, if it was in class. Um, yeah. Um, the other point is that, um, from a point of view of you know just being, uh, you know, um, uh, you just have you know the application of it, you know, in in the class itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I know recently, uh, you know, some of the uh, some of the other uh, um, uh, lecturers have been, um, you know, trying to put us in breakout groups and you know, engaging. Uh -huh. You know, engaging with us uh, in a in a more personal way, but other and also there is also engagement within the within the uh, participants uh, within the students themselves, which I think is uh, yeah, which is really good. You know, I mean, I think that's where technology is, uh, has actually uh, facilitated that. 
So I, I, I guess my point is that, um, you know, what maybe what, you know, maybe some of the feedback that you may want to provide to us. And also um, whether there is opportunity to, you know, to provide, to do some more, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, interaction uh -huh. in this particular class, because I think leadership is, is I mean, it's, it's you know, you know it's, there is learnings, but there's also the, the freedom yeah. to apply it. Uh -huh. How would it be different in an in-class, um, uh, you know, when you taught this in in-class in environment versus yeah, yeah, now? yeah, <clears throat> yeah. In person, of course. Uh, I was just thinking of a couple of things. Uh, thanks for that feedback, also, um, Chris. Yeah, a couple of things would be, of course, our uh, um, the in-class. You know, we we won't think twice about having a group discussion. You know, splitting into different groups and and doing that. Um, whereas here, you know. Uh, uh, not always, um, and also I think uh, in person the the informal discussions, you know, maybe during the break, maybe uh, you know one on one chats or just the informal discussions that we could have uh, outside of class. You know, when you just step out uh, during a tea break, you know, I think those are things that we uh, that we really miss. I mean, miss, and we can't really replicate online. Um, but apart from that, I think. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> um, like my my uh, observation is that the feedback, uh, my feedback is that um, you know we've we've had some good engagements, uh, some some good questions, uh, just uh, sparked some good um, discussions. Um, but I take your feedback. I'll see how we can how best we can maybe we can look at case studies, uh, um, maybe uh, you know in a in a in in a in person setting we could also do these group presentations where people can step up and then you know uh, uh, do a group uh, presentation uh, each person doing different uh, you know aspects of that presentation but um, yeah um, i'll see how we can do this um, maybe we can do some case studies uh, we can do some group discussion so so yeah i'll find out so uh, you've been doing a breakout session um, uh, in the google platform uh, have you been doing that? Yes, yes. So uh, we have done it uh, recently. I think this this week we did it in um, in uh, Pastor Jean's um, class. Oh, okay. And okay. Um, I think we also have done it in um, uh, you know, Nancy Nancy Ramya's class also. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so those right. classes are those sure. classes different. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll. I'll see. I'll also talk to the faculty. I'll see. I you know how they did it, and uh, it didn't really uh, occur to me uh, how we could do it. But uh, yeah, that's something that we could do. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Any other uh, thoughts? Uh, any other feedback? I know we didn't plan this, but uh, maybe you can take a minute or two um, to make the learning even more, um, you know, uh, helpful. Uh, maybe. Okay. Um, you can always feel free to email me as well, right? Um, you know my email ID. So, okay. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for that feedback. Okay. So, um, yeah. Let's uh, let's continue. Um, so we are looking at okay the certification part. Um, uh, could you? explain uh, Shrikma. Yeah, uh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, just want to uh, uh, yeah. just want to share. Like, um, uh, is it? Uh, I don't know how it is possible or not. But um, uh, even I'm not aware about um, the like. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely. Uh, it's a. It's a, like um, the the. It's very informative and it is uh, really uh, you know building uh, each one of our personal uh, spiritual growth. But uh, the the part of uh, certification uh, of this course, uh, how valid it is? Like, no, I just want to know that. And uh, um, especially in India, where we need, uh, you know, uh, a special kind of, uh, you know, <clears throat> um, this Asian theology ATA approval and all. Oh, okay, um, okay. Okay. So that that area, how can we develop? That's only one thing because. Yes, we are getting that degree. Uh, absolutely, we are uh, getting more than what <laughs> what we are learning from another Bible college. Mm -hmm. But when we when we spending three years and uh, 
and uh, that the ata is not there then we have to just uh, look uh, something else also uh, mm -hmm. you know um, to uh, to get that certification or uh, whatever it is so, uh, okay uh, okay okay so, for maybe so for your post graduation <laughs> Post graduation or whatever it is, then then again we have to do something another three years or two years. Uh, you have to spend oh, for get, uh, oh, something which is connected with ATA to like from other mm -hmm. colleges to to get that ATA approval. Yeah, so that's one thing I just want. Yeah, Thank so you. we yeah. yeah, it's true that we do not have an ATA accreditation. Um, maybe but is it only this... valid in India or um, or uh, is it in abroad? Uh, you can use this certificate also. Uh, I'm not too sure uh, about that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm not too sure. Probably, uh, uh, Diana would be Diana Nancy would be able to answer that, um, or maybe even Pastor Ashish. I'm I'm not really familiar with that. Okay, okay. Um, you could write to you know you could write to Diana and uh, you could get that information. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Right. Okay. Okay, yeah, so uh, if you have anything related to the course in that aspect, you know, about certification, about accreditation, about uh, maybe you want to do a higher thing, uh, you know, uh, post-graduation or something um, uh, overseas, if you're thinking and, and uh, you know, how this would help, you could check with uh, Diana. I, I'm not too familiar with that. Right? Sure, Pastor, sure. Thank you. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay, let's, uh, we'll continue. Okay, let's um, just share that. Okay, okay here we go. Um, just reading uh, Matthew 22, verses 34 to 40. Okay, so... Um, uh, the lawyer comes, the scribe comes and asks the Lord a question in verse 35. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him, saying, uh, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Um, and then Paul also echoes that in Galatians 5, uh, when he says, "For the, all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So, um, so uh, in, in that conversation with the, with the scribe, the Lord um, uh, points out to the, to the great commandment, the first commandment as, uh, you know, uh, uh, as we read in uh, Mark chapter 12, um, which which is about being sold out to God, you know, spirit, soul, and body, to to love Him wholeheartedly, to which means to get to know Him and uh, walk with Him intimately, and so on. But we see how closely that is tied with a loving people as well, because God is God's heart is for people. You know, God uh, God's heart is to commune with people to have that fellowship with people right and uh, and we see that uh, uh, and we see that all the time that God is interacting he's not isolating himself from people or alienating himself from people so so it just goes on it's just natural that when you love God with all your heart you know the, the what flows out of that is to love people love your neighbor as yourself so loving God and loving people you know going together and loving God uh, you know, out of that flows our love for people, right? So um, we're going to look at, uh, uh, you know, uh, how we can win with people, winning with people um, and in ministry as leaders. So I just thought it'd be good if we watch a video uh, by John C. Maxwell. And uh, John C. Maxwell, as we know, uh, has written a lot of books on leadership, and, and some of you have been very, um, I think, avid readers of his books, uh, from what I see. Um, so just watch um, a video about um, uh, this particular topic of winning with people. And his, this is old the video. So we'll, we'll watch and then probably um, some at some sections we could pause and we could discuss uh, uh, as well. Right. So, um, and John C. Maxwell, uh, he, he started off as a pastor. 
he founded a church and pastoring a church quite successful but he felt the lord call him uh, into this um, space you know e- even which involves uh, you know secular uh, audience and um, to to talk about leadership to to write about leadership and uh, he's uh, he's really made a, a made a mark uh, uh, and uh, and a really strong voice on leadership and a refreshing voice on leadership um and uh, and 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 the lord has been using him uh, quite um, you know successfully and 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 uh, as a voice of impact in that area right so um so uh, when he talks about this you know certain things are very very practical um uh, and but he comes from a, a biblical standpoint you know uh, though he may not really quote scripture uh, uh, quote verse uh, i mean chapter and verse for each and every statement or each and every principle but you know that it's founded on biblical uh, principles right and uh, of course some of his examples and illustrations are very uh very american because he is one so it's uh, it's close to home for him to list, talk about those kind of uh, scenarios so that's the only thing that we need to be um mindful of right okay so let's uh, let me try and share that video and we'll watch i i will be switching off my um, camera uh, but i just want you guys to engage uh, with it right uh, and don't switch off okay let me share the video Okay. Right. Um, just give me a thumbs up on the chat. Recently, I uh, was uh, okay. amused by some of the resumes that I saw in Forbes magazine. It was kind of almost like a, can you believe that people would put this on your resume type of an article? And I thought, since this is a relationship lesson, and I've written a relationship book. I thought I would just share with you a few of these resumes. You, you just, you're just not going to believe them. For example, these are real resumes, okay? People applying for real jobs. People saying things like, it's best for employers if I don't work with people. Now, there's one to hire, isn't it, huh? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, we'll, we'll put you over here in the corner and you'll never see anybody. <laughs> we don't want to have people involved in your life. Here's another one. The company made me a scapegoat just like my previous employers. <laughs> Absolutely, just, I'm the scapegoat. Here's one, note, please don't misconstrue my 14 jobs as job hoppy. I have never quit a job. <laughs> one more, <laughs> I love this one. References, none. I've left a path of destruction behind me. <laughs> <laughs> the book is entitled Winning with People Discover the People Principles that Work Every Time. Now, when you look at that book and you realize that I say discover the people principles that work every time, I didn't say, and I want to make sure you understand, it, I didn't say discover the people principles that work every time for everybody. I didn't say discover the people principles that work for others every time. I did say discover the people principles that work for you every time because two things in your notes. These people principles will help you better understand others. And two, they will help you better understand yourself. The result, the daily practice of these people principles will improve your people skills with everyone. Note, I did not say everyone would like you. <laughs> That's impossible. You see, we cannot always determine how others will respond to us. We can't always determine how we will respond to others. So therefore, note, when I respond correctly to you, I win. That's what these people principles will teach you. They'll teach you how to respond correctly to others. When others respond correctly to me, we win. What I'm concerned about is not how other people relate to you. I'm concerned about how you relate to others. A long time ago, I learned that I cannot control the actions or the reactions of others. But if I understand people correctly, and if I have good people skills, I can control mine. And I can determine 
not how they feel about me, but I can determine how I feel about them. In fact, one time I shared with someone, I said, I have no enemies. And they looked at me and said, well, well, how could you have no enemies? Being a leader like you are and a strong leader and building organizations, you've got to have a lot of people that aren't happy with you. I said, oh, no, no, I, I didn't say a lot of people were unhappy with me. I, it's, I have no enemies. See, how you treat me, that's your choice. How I treat you, that's my choice. If you don't like me, that's your choice. I'll still choose to like you. Too many times we underestimate the power of personal choice. And when I talk about how these people principles will help you to win with people, what I know is if you have the right attitude with the right relationship skills and the proper understanding of people, you will always win in your notes. In life, the skills you use and the people you choose will make or break you. I've divided the people principles in this book according to five critical questions that we must ask ourselves if we want to win with people. Number one is readiness. Are we prepared for relationships? Number two, connection. Are we willing to focus on others? Three is trust. Can we build mutual trust? For investment, are we willing to invest in others? And finally, number five, synergy. Can we create a win-win relationship? I want to talk to you, first of all, today about readiness. Are we prepared for relationships? Now, in this readiness level of relationships, there are five people principles. Number one. The lens principle. The lens principle says who we are determines how we view others. I love the Groucho Marx comment. I wouldn't want to belong to any club that would accept me as a member. <laughs> says it all, doesn't it? You see, the question I must ask myself is what is my perception of others? Because who you are determines the way you see everything. You cannot separate your identity from your perspective. All that you are and every experience that you've had color how you see things. It's in your lens. Here's what I mean. Number one, who you are determines what you see. A Coloradan moved to Texas and built a house with a large picture window from which he could view hundreds of miles of range land. When asked how he enjoyed the view, he responded, the only problem is there's nothing to see. <laughs> About the same time, a Texan moved to Colorado and built a house with a large picture window overlooking the Rockies. When asked how he liked it, he said the only problem with this place is that you can't see anything because all those mountains are in your way. <laughs> Who you are determines how you see. I was having dinner the other day with Francis Hustlevine, and I was also having uh, time with Jim Collins, having a wonderful, really, three-hour dinner in that process. And because Francis has been uh, with Peter Drucker for many, many years, I asked her what was the greatest thing that he ever taught her. She said that he has said to her many, many times, Francis, look out of the window and see things that are within your view that others do not see. What Peter Drucker was basically saying is, we all can look at the same thing, but we don't all see the same thing. We're going to see according to who we are. For example of that, my wife Margaret, very aware of what people wear. Ah. Many times we'll be at a party together and she'll say, you know, you were talking to the guy in the blue sweater. What, did he, what was he talking about this evening? And I'll look at her and I'll say, what blue sweater? I can't relate. Now, she sees the person with the blue sweater. That's how she views people, by how they dress, what clothes they have on. Personally, that's nothing that really grabs hold of me. Now, see, she looks at a person entirely different than I look at a person. Who we are determines what we see. Number two, who you are determines how you see others. It's a classic old story of two guys, uh, separate families that were moving into a little town and on one day, one of the guys who was moving into town stopped at the local hardware store and said, I've got to ask you a question. He said, how are the people of this town? 
And the owner of the hardware store looked at him and said, well, let me ask you a question. How were the people from the town that you came from? He said, oh, he said, they weren't very friendly. He said, in fact, that's why I'm really glad to be moving to this town. And the guy at the hardware store said, you know, I'm so sorry. They're not very friendly here either. A couple days later, another guy dropped by the same hardware store, said, I'm moving here. He said, I got to ask you a question. How are the people at the town? And again, the owner of the hardware store looked at him and said, let me ask you, how were the people in the town that you just left? Oh, he said, we hated to leave. Those people were so friendly and so warm. We had great relationships and the owner of the hardware store says, I've got great news for you. They're friendly here also. You see, it's a fact. Who you are determines how you see others. The way people see others is a reflection of themselves. For example, if I'm a trusting person, I will see others as trustworthy. If I'm a critical person, I will see others as critical. If I'm a caring person, I will see others as compassionate. Phil McGraw had it right when he said, you teach people how to treat you. That is a powerful statement. Number three, who you are determines how you view life. I have the privilege of speaking to a lot of NFL teams. And one of the teams I've done a lot of work with is the St. Louis Rams. And I have a wonderful friend on the Rams team who is an offensive uh, coach named John Matsko. And uh, recently I was at a Rams uh, game and I was sitting with his wife, Kim, and some of the wives of the other coaches on the, on the St. Louis team. And I know for a fact, because I've known John for probably 15, 18 years, that, that they've lived in uh, at least seven or eight different cities. Kind of being a coach, they move from city to city and are coaching with different teams. And so I said, Kim, I said, I've got to ask you a question. Of all the cities you've lived in, I said, what's your favorite city? And she said to me, she said, well, where I am right now. I said, oh, you like St. Louis better than any other cities that you ever lived in? She said, I didn't say that. <laughs> you asked me what my favorite city is. And she said, my favorite city is where I am right now. What Kim was really saying to me that day was, where you live, who you're around, basically, you're going to determine how you view people by how you are yourself. And Kim was saying, I have a good attitude about wherever I am, and so therefore I like wherever I am. Number four, who you are determines what you do. The question I've always asked myself is, what determines who I am and who you are? Well, number one is genetics, no doubt about that. My wife and I have had the privilege of adopting two children. They're now grown, married, and we have four grandchildren from them. And they were great delights to us. But when I and Margaret adopted them, you know, many, many, many years ago, I was about 85% environmentalist and about a 15% genetics. Now, having raised two adopted children, I'm about 85% genetics and about 15% environment. <laughs> it's kind of like when I was a pastor and didn't have any children, I had great lessons on how to raise your kids. And I had some and went into about a 20-year silence. <laughs> but who we are, major genetic issues. Number two, self-image. He was exactly right when T.S. Eliot said, half of the harm that is done in this world is due to people who want to feel important. They do not mean to do harm. They are absorbed in the endless struggle to think well of themselves. Number three, experiences in life. Basically, the experiences that you and I have do mold us. And I would say this, we've all heard it said that experience is the best teacher. But I'm here to tell you it isn't, never has been. I've known all kind of people who have had all kind of experience and they haven't learned anything. Just because you're getting older doesn't mean you're getting better. Evaluated experience is the best teacher. The ability to look at where you have been and what you have done and pull back and reflect and evaluate, that's the instructor of our life. Number four, attitude. Attitudes and choices about those experiences determine what you and I do. Number five, friends. The friends that we associate with have a great determining factor on who we are and what we do. 
I close with this paragraph on people principle number one, the lens principle. The way you view others is determined by who you are. You cannot get away from that truth. If you don't like people, that really is a statement about you and the way that you look at people. Who you are determines how you view others. Your viewpoint is the problem. If that's the case, don't try to change others. Don't even focus on others. Focus on yourself. If you change yourself and become the kind of person you desire to be, you will begin to view others in a whole new light, and that will change the way you interact in all of your relationships. People principle number two. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I just like to add one more thing, you know, which determines who we are, which is really um, what we've been learning from the first semester, which is, uh, I mean, he's been talking about identity, but the fact that who we are in Christ um, actually covers everything else and supersedes everything else. Right. So when we come to that understanding and that revelation, and um, if we allow that revelation and truth to change us from the inside out, that would, you know, change everything else. Right. So I just want to hear your thoughts um, about getting ready to relate to others. Um, yeah, something that um, that you learned from this, something that stood out for you. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just leaving it open. So, yeah, what do you, yeah, go ahead, uh, say. Thank you, Pastor. I, I think one thing, um, one thing that stands out from everything he said, said is um, when we want to relate with people or if we have issues with people it's very important for us to check ourselves we could be the peak problem or our viewpoint or a perception of that situation or that person or people around us could be from us so i think the first place to always start out as a leader or as an individual is to look at ourselves um, is that something we're missing is there a way we're looking at this situation you know it could be different from what it exactly is. So I think it's very important we first of all work with us, work on ourselves before we even, you know, try to um, try to solve a problem or even try to correct someone else. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's very important again that for us to succeed in relating with people we ourselves must be comfortable with who we are, our identity, like you pointed out again, in Christ. But we must be comfortable with ourselves. We must be um, sure of who we are. That's Once we're sure about who we are in Christ and, and, and we, we have that inner God confidence within, it's easy now then to relate with other people. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Praise God. Um, thank you, Say. You know, um, uh, having worked in like um, uh, four organizations um, prior to coming to and to work, uh, prior to working with church, you know, realize that um, uh, you, you, I mean, you see, you know, broken people. And as leaders, you see people with, um, you know, insecure people as leaders. You see, uh, you know, people with so many issues as, uh, you know, as leaders and who are overlooking, who are seeing uh, some great, uh, I mean, some big responsibilities. And, um, and of course, we are all works in progress. I'm not denying that. But the fact is that uh, when we are healthy uh, and whole, then the way we see things uh, changes when we are healthy and whole we um, the way we relate to people is totally different right so the importance of um, you know as God, as the lord uh, entrusts us with people right? um, the beautiful thing is that uh, yeah we are works in progress who are leading others who are works in progress um, but the more we uh, 
you know, we receive from him and, uh, and all these uh, f- fundamental issues are dealt with and, and we have the access for that. We have the resources in Christ. We have people whom God places in our lives to, to bring about that, you know, to change that about us, um, uh, to enable us to be a success. Right, in our in our relationships, right, and uh, and this is very very crucial. The way um, the, that we work on ourselves, that we receive healing and wholeness, that we receive strength, and uh, and so we come to a healthy way of viewing ourselves. You know that we don't put ourselves down at the t- same time. We don't inflate ourselves or uh, you know esteem ourselves higher than what we should. Right. So and and the word of God is like a mirror. It shows us exactly, you know, the true worth, a true picture of who we are. And that is why we are exhorted to, you know, in the book of James, to to look into the word, to continue in it. And it's like a mirror, which shows us who we are. Right. Now, any, any, anyone else, um, what, what you picked up from what you saw, something that was highlighted to you? Yes, please go ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, sorry. And there's something that I've been thinking, uh, it stayed with me while watching the video and even before is, uh, so this is mostly positive and it's about, you know, working with people, onboarding equity, building people, uh, collaborating. Um, I'm thinking more on the negative, like what happens when uh, if the people that, like, you're kidding, like you're saying, there are people who have differences, people that you don't really like. That, so I think two scenarios. One is, let's say, people you know, you don't really like, but they want to work with you. Mm-hmm. Do you. Do you still onboard them? Knowing, not knowing that you're you're not very confident, but you still hire them. Thinking, hopefully, by working with them, I'll help this person change. I'm sorry, Sam. The last part I didn't get. You know, uh, people who whom you don't like, uh, do you still onboard them? You're talking about a professional decision, hiring decision. Okay. Yes, something Uh, like that. Collaborate. You decide to collaborate. Mm. To do that, hoping that you will change, you'll be able to change them, or you will be able to change your perception about them. Mm. Or, or similarly, you know, people working with you already, working with you, and there are some conflicts, there are things that you don't like and you try to address. But, uh, you know, you're seeing that changes are not happening, and you're saying you can break that relationship, mm. walk away from it. Uh, how, how long do you keep being optimistic? Or keep mm. trying to change your perception uh, versus just calling it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's, um, yeah, that's an important question and an important decision that needs to be made as well. You know, when it comes to hiring, of course, things are clear, your expectations are clear, and yes, people are different. So, um, but you have your expectations uh, based on competence, based on how they would culturally fit into the ministry or organization. Um, you know, it's not, you're not really being partial, but um, but this is your, you know, this is your expectation or this is your profile uh, for the role uh, or it could be a church, it could be a ministry, it could be an organization, uh, business, whatever. But this is, you know, this is, uh, you have a set expectation profile, okay? Uh, you look at the competence, you look at their you know, personality type, you look at the, you know, the culture and values, what they stand for, and you see if it will be a right fit for um, for that role. Um, there could be certain things which can be aligned because of training, and uh, and mentoring and so on. So um, it's really a you know a call that you take at that time, right? And and of course, most organizations have that period of orientation where where both the hire and the one. Who be hired, so, you know, this is a 
this is like a, a what do you call probation time you, you see that if it works out and then there's an evaluation at the end of it so it's it's made clear that maybe after uh, after a month or two months then you know we evaluate um and when you don't see things um you know, change then we will have to probably take a decision again um and then that's one thing and of course in a uh, organization you know uh, as time goes by you know you always have those checks you know you have always have a like a performance appraisal a ministry appraisal uh, where there is a feedback to the person uh, on skill it could be on attitude it could be on several other aspects right um uh, it could be uh, so many other things and when you say that okay this is the feedback and these are areas of um, change and growth uh, improvement and so on so um, let's say a person is being a difficult person you know uh, being very disruptive uh, not getting along with others and of course uh, you know being the compassionate leader you need to find out why is this happening maybe things that the home front not going well you know is there some kind of pressure that the person is going through and of course we we find that find, find all that uh, in in conversation and try to address that and say hey this is not really helping um and uh, uh, this is how it's affecting uh, this is how, how it's affecting you know you know the the morale of people it's affecting the productivity of people so something has to change right and the person might have 3 4 reasons you know saying one two three these are the reasons and and so you address that they solve that and uh, and 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 then you know give time for the person to change and then we keep going um and at the same time you know you're checking your motive you know uh, uh, your motive also at the same time saying okay am i being objective in this am i being partial am i being biased am i bringing my personal biases into this right so you check that and uh, and which is why you know uh, organizations have you know maybe a panel or uh, uh, you know even for the interview where you get a objective uh, you know uh, 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 very very objective um, uh, evaluation right uh, when it comes to interviews but when it comes to you know your direct reports maybe it's just um, uh, yeah So, uh, so Sam's question is: Have you fired someone over performance issues? Would you be able to share a live example how you went about it? Uh, it would be okay. Uh, fired someone? Okay, I have not personally have I? <laughs> no, I don't think so. But, oh yeah, I mean in the sense um, not fired. I won't use the fired word, uh, but uh, we've had to uh, kind of ask the person to step down, um, and I think it was. Um, Mm, so we've had you know we uh, we had issues this was someone who was um, you know uh, volunteering and serving in the worship team and and there were some issues so we had a a, a long uh, chat about it a discussion a very real discussion so myself pastor roshan and this person and then we had a discussion um uh, just to evaluate okay how things are going and hey um, you know are you happy doing what you're doing and and the person came back um with uh, you know with certain things you know this is what i find is wrong in the you know in in the practice sessions and and the person was coming from a place of uh, saying okay uh, you know i have these all these years of experience and all these yeah you know this has been my qualification this has been my uh, training and this is my experience so and here i have someone this person you know just re uh, like join I had at that point maybe i'm talking about maybe 3 4 years back at that point just joined the uh, team you know and uh, was having these issues uh, having these challenges so and people were also feeling a little um, you know uncomfortable so uh, and the reason was this that uh, i said how can i how can this person not take my input how can this person not and you know, i have all these years of experience and everything and i'm coming from that place at the same time this person also was feeling uh, you know uh, was not able to take the uh, uh, suggestions and feedback and input of someone who was younger than then uh, younger in age maybe younger in uh, in terms of experience or uh, less experience and so on so um 
so then we we had to again go back and and say okay um, you know uh, it could be so but this is what this is our objective it's not about you know maybe you have a valid uh you know uh, and we we looked to get gone into the details and say uh, you know we went into the details to see uh, what was the the thing you know okay it was a, about this chord about that chord and then we had to share and hey this is the feedback about you know uh, about you uh about um your skill level uh, your lack of it you know, so it doesn't just it's not just about how many years of experience you have or you know qualifications or uh, uh, you know you have about the particular thing but having being able to put uh, and being able to deliver so you know and it doesn't matter if the feedback is coming from someone who's less experienced you know that person uh, is is part of the team and you take it well so we had to address things like that and then we also found out that there were other issues you know um, other issues uh, domestic issues so which were coming which were really adding to the problem and then uh, just felt that it was um, we said okay you know why don't you uh, uh, initially we just felt like saying okay why don't you take some time out um, uh, uh, you know and then get back but then we just felt that it's better that we uh you know ask that person to focus on some other area of uh, of ministry rather than the worship thing because um the other issues were not going to go away because um, it was very clear uh even if he made changes in a few areas um the other things he was not going to make any changes whatsoever because it was like beyond him so he said he rather than things not helping in uh, Uh, you know no not thing i mean this uh, not things um this this really not making uh, things any better uh, at the home front i think it's better that you you know focus on that uh, and uh, it would be better that you focus on some other area of ministry which does not require so much commitment of time uh, some other area of ministry but um yeah so so we suggested that and he also graciously accepted and uh, yeah we're still friends we're still you know uh, working i mean working in the sense worshiping together but uh, um you know from time to time pray uh, uh, call etc but uh, yeah so this is this would uh, be the closest um that we had to uh, at i for me personally uh, not really fire because we are dealing with volunteers here um, and this is what we had to do so yeah and it's it's not always a comfortable thing i know like given my personality i really had to you know work at it um uh, uh, and uh, you know uh, do this right so yeah so but the thing is we need to be true uh, to ourselves true to uh, what we are actually the bigger picture right we are serving uh we are serving god and um, we are serving god together and we have a you know shared uh, set of expectations and and of course this is uh, you know it's not like the over one conversation it's done with right but this was the uh, you know the final conversation which uh, which happened so yeah so king saul performance is used there so i hope this was helpful um uh, sam um it is it is perfect it's still one of the i think most difficult conversations to have yeah. with someone absolutely it is it is difficult but, yeah it is difficult because you're thinking of you know what would happen to the person you know this was okay but i'm sure you know there are other things where it involves the livelihood of the person your you know uh, but then um it has to be done it has to be done in a ministry scenario it has to be done you know sometimes we think uh, you know we should not do that no uh, we 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 need to be true to god we need to be true to others and uh, do it uh, with grace and when with love uh, we're not rejecting the person altogether you know you're still being in touch with the person and you do it with uh, the communication with with regard you know honor and it has to be done right um so tarun uh, about king saul how how god rejects king saul is that what you're saying 
Yeah, yeah I'm, I was just uh, thinking through performance issues, but uh, uh, yeah, that's a good s- scenario to like. I'm just pondering on like, did he? Is it because mm-hmm. of the performance issues? How uh, God let someone else in in his mm-hmm. place? Also, I, I just wanted to add um, uh, that there are like you know firing usually happens in the corporate world because of ethical issues or integrity issues something really drastic uh, mm-hmm. like insider trading or uh, some abuse things mm-hmm. like that which the policies don't allow them to continue further and it, it's a straightforward thing that uh, it's proven guilty and they are fired. Uh, yeah. But there are also good scenarios where uh, the company has to ramp down, otherwise they will not be able to grow further and uh, they will want to fire uh, people. Uh, but mm. uh, there are some good companies which have turned themselves into a consultant where uh, they have rolled out policies for the following six months. Let's say you have to remove about 1,000 people. Mm. They took the responsibility of placing those 1,000 people in other forms. By creating okay. advertisements uh, saying that we have these profiles which are available, but we are ramping down for so and so reasons. If you could hire them, it would be great. So they continuously placed ads on the weekly magazines, reached out to top consultants, and ensured that all of them were placed uh, okay. in a very formal manner. Wow, that's brilliant. That's that's really awesome um, that uh, that a firm could do that. Um, yeah. That the human side of the firm really comes, and, and I think great leadership and great courage and uh, um, and and compassion in wanting to do that. Super. Okay, hey, that's all time we have for today. So we'll stop here, and uh, we'll catch up uh, next week. Okay, so have a great weekend. God bless you all. We'll see you again. Bye bye.